here we go. Uh, first of all, my name is Fred Cannon. I'm a professor emeritus at the Pennsylvania State University in environmental engineering. I'm very interested in the topic of science and faith. Our first speaker is Bill Jordan. He's of Baylor University, and his talk is Sustainable Engineering Across the Curriculum at a Christian University. Bill, you're on. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Bill Jordan. I retired two months ago from Baylor University's Mechanical Engineering Program. My co-authors are Byron Newberry from Mechanical Engineering and Brian Thomas uh, from Electrical Engineering. <clears throat> my goal is to describe how we put sustainable engineering topics into a number of different courses across our curriculum. Because of the time limits we had, I was not able to put in this presentation everything I wanted to. So I have uh, already, uh, through ASA's help, uploaded my presentation and it has about 15 extra slides at the end of backup material, including references to some publications we've done on this topic. I would use the term, <coughs> excuse me, that this has been a journey with me through the world of sustainable engineering. I've had an interest in it for a long time, but didn't much know much about it. So in the fall of 2016, I stepped down as department chair at Baylor and I took a sabbatical at Villanova University. And the main thing I did in the sabbatical was to sit in on two graduate classes, Fundamentals of Sustainable Engineering and Sustainable Materials and Design. I'm fundamentally a materials engineer in a mechanical engineering program, so that second course was very relevant to me. My views on a number of things changed. I was a mild climate change skeptic, but I certainly, after my experience and what I learned at Villanova, see climate change as very real and a very serious challenge for us engineers. So while at Villanova, I also began to think about what it might be for a Christian perspective on sustainable engineering. They also are a faith-based university, so there were faith issues in some of the classes. And the first result of that was four years ago when I talked here at ASA about a Christian approach to sustainable engineering. But at that point, I'm just talking about the approach of, of a personal Christian engineer. The next step was to try and put it into classes. So three years ago, I presented, a, I put it into a required materials engineering course. And that's what I presented at ASA three years ago. It's a junior level course in our mechanical engineering program. One of the things I've done with many of my ASA papers is to present a secular version of this at an engineering education conference. So I present a secular version of this at the American Society for Engineering Education annual conference that same summer. The most recent step was to create a three semester technical elective about this subject and I chose corrosion and sustainable metallurgy. This combined my materials expertise and interest in corrosion with sustainable engineering topics and I presented this two years ago. I did my master's thesis on liquid metal corrosion so I've had an interest in corrosion for my whole career. So I've really never had time to teach it because I had to teach a lot of other required courses. So I really enjoyed this class. I've taught it twice now. It's been a very fun class to teach. <clears throat> One of the things we as engineering educators have to deal with is a group called ABET. ABET is a group that accredits engineering programs. And they have begun, they made changes over the years. One of them is to require sustainability topics. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but one of their issues is that the engineering design means you need to deal with constraints. And you see, I put in red, uh, big font there, uh, what some of the considerations we need to put into all of our designs are maintainability and sustainability. <clears throat> Another thing that's important to engineers is the various engineering codes of conduct for the states and different professional societies. Engineers have kind of come late to this uh, topic in terms of deciding that it's important, but NSPE is the National Society of Professional Engineers. That's the most generic code of ethics. And they state that engineers are encouraged to adhere to the principles of sustainable development in order to protect the environment for future generations. I think that's a great statement. It's an important one. But you know, it never did get into our codes until January of 2006, unfortunately. But I'm glad that it's in the codes now. So one of the questions, if we're going to do sustainable engineering, I, we really need to be doing some sustainable development. So the question is, what is sustainable development? There's uh, a lot of people who created complex definitions of sustainable development. The thing I really loved about the people at Villanova is they define sustainable development by four words. They say that it is enough for all and forever. And I think that hits at the heart 
of sustainable development. Uh, these long, complicated <clears throat> definitions may be useful from an academic perspective, but this is short enough that my students will understand and the public can understand as well. But one of the things as a Christian university, we want to put some Christian perspectives. We've certainly learned a lot from the creation care movement and also from just the environmental movement, but sustainable engineering, while it doesn't have environmental concerns, is a lot broader topic. And the Bible has much to say about this. Uh, I do use a number of Bible references in my engineering ethics course. But since the Bible was written in a pre-technology era, there aren't really direct statements, obviously, about engineering or science. We need to infer things from general principles. I've learned a great deal from actually, for two guys named Francis. Uh, I was a young Christian at the Colorado School of Mines. I was very impressed with Francis Schaeffer's book, Pollution on the Death of Man. The Christian view of ecology. And then six years ago, Pope Francis came out with Laudato Si on care for our common home. What I was amazed at is these people were writing 45 years, 35 years apart, 45 years apart from very different theological traditions, had a tremendous overlap in what they had to say about sustainability. So here are two quotes from them. The first one: We are not God. The earth was here before us and has been given to us. Nowadays, we must forcefully reject the notion that our being created in God's image and given dominion over the earth justifies absolute dominion over other creatures. And the other Francis says, why does strip mining turn the world into an absolute desert? What has brought about this ugly destruction of the environment? There is only one reason, man's greed. And I'm going to ask this rhetorically, which Francis said which one. When I shared this as a devotional for our college engineer and faculty, almost everybody got it wrong. Almost everybody guessed the strip mining quote was from the Pope, and actually the strip mining quote is from Francis Schaeffer. <clears throat> One of my other colleagues had been heavily, Dr. Newberry, had been heavily influenced by a comment Dietrich Bonhoeffer made about creation in the fall relating to our relationship to the physical world around us, the plants, the animals, the environment. Uh, he says, uh, Bonhoeffer said this freedom to rule includes being bound to the creatures who are ruled. The ground and the animals over which I am Lord constitute the world in which I live, without which I cease to be. It is my worth, earth, my world over which I rule. On the end he said, my whole being, my creatureliness, I belong wholly to this world. It bears me, nurtures me, and holds me. But Bonhoeffer, speaking from a Christian perspective too, makes the point that we can't really separate humankind from the world. We can in a spiritual sense, but not in the sense that we've got to live with what we do to the environment and the animals and plants have to live with it as well. So we've done, made significant changes into five different courses. Uh, the first one is engineering ethics. Everybody in Baylor's engineering program has to take an ethics course. While they can take a philosophy one or a religion one, almost all of them take one of the two courses we have here. Uh, social and ethical issues in engineering, or ethics of international service. And we'll talk more about each of these a little bit later. Within mechanical engineering, all students have to take our mechanical engineering materials course. Since I'm the materials uh, uh, person at heart, I'm the main one who teaches this course, so I was able to add in sustainability, and it's been very popular. Then we've had two different technical electives in mechanical engineering. The generic one on sustainable engineering has been created about 10 years ago by Dr. Newberry. He teaches that every year. And then I created the one I mentioned before, corrosion and sustainable metallurgy, and I have taught it uh, twice in the last three years. <clears throat> so I want to talk about each of these courses and how we put sustainability in them. The international service one deals with things like short-term volunteerism. Uh, if you do, go do an engineering project in another country, what's going to be the problems you face? What are some sustainable engineer approaches to combating poverty? From Christian perspectives on poverty, what is justice? What is humanitarian engineering, which is not quite the same as uh, sustainable engineering, but has tremendous overlap. This group course is taught in the context that we have a strong partnership with the Baylor Missions Department and the student organization Engineers with a Mission. This is the largest group within the College of Engineering. It's bigger than a discipline-specific engineering group. And you see some of the places we've gone to. I've been to Kenya once, Honduras once, Haiti three times, and Rwanda five times with students. And the rest of, uh, we've actually, the group gone to Haiti probably about eight times as a whole. 
one of the things we have is a, we want to be sustainable in our projects. So missions require us to commit to go to a place for at least three years. Uh, the when we select students to given to take this go on these projects, the priority is given to students who've taken this course because we think they've been adequately prepared. And the projects often center on renewable energy systems as well. The generic <coughs> engineering ethics class is taken by a majority of our students. We talk about both Christian ethics and engineering ethics and relate them to. The book we found to be the best generic engineering one is the fifth edition of Engineering Ethics by Harris, Pritchard, Rabins, and Engelhart. And we have readings from a number of other books, including The Moral Quest by Stanley Grins, which is a Christian ethics book and two other engineering ethics books. We have a number of modules. We talk about engineering codes of conduct, value dimensions of the technology, ethical theories. This course overlaps a little bit with the other one. We talk about global engineering and engineering in the developing world. You know, what is humanitarian engineering? That's another whole long subject, and it's one I'm very interested in. And we, you see some other issues as well. And we have very many real world case studies. Our materials course, I added a couple projects, modules to it. One, looking at things students are familiar with, baseball bats. Why do we have polymeric bats, aluminum bats, and wood bats? How do they perform? <clears throat> how are they sustainable? And then how do you decide which one is best? On the corrosion one, they had to go out and photograph an example of something they saw corroded in their community. A number of them took pictures from their apartment complex, and they had to tell the fact class what kind of corrosion this was, and how could it have been made more sustainable? So we asked some questions. Why are baseball bats made from different materials? Corrosion, how has corrosion hurt your life? And, and students uh, certainly are very familiar with both of these and were very interested in that. We've also had another canoes project. You make canoes out of aluminum, plastic, or wood as well. <clears throat> the generic sustainable engineering course is goal is to introduce students to the whole topic. So we have a whole bunch of things here about overview of environmental and sustainability, life cycle analysis, energy flows. Those are all talked about in my specific corrosion metallurgy class as well. In the corrosion class, this is a more specialized class. Graduate students can take it. You can take this without having taken the previous class. And this class was a subject of my presentation two years ago. The goals, they need to understand corrosion. What are the eight types of corrosion? How can you apply sustainable engineering to the use of metallic materials, including a Christian approach to sustainability? And then they need to create alternative designs. And then they need to create, create a class project that about design a metallic product that will be more sustainable than what's been done with traditional methods and metals. So there's three required books here. The first one is the junior level engineering book that they already have. Michael Ashby has written an excellent book on materials and sustainable development. The book Rust, The Longest War, is a best-selling book written by a journalist about how has rust damaged our world. And then there's some readings from the other ones I've already mentioned. They had to do projects in this class as well. And some of them, one of them I did, one about a solar product in Nantucket, one about solar photovoltaic in Texas. One of my graduate students was also a practicing attorney so he looked at the municipal recycling program at Waco to see how it fit into the standards. And he used legal analysis as well as engineering analysis. It was a fascinating a project to my perspective. So some of our conclusions are our faculty believes it's important for our students to learn about sustainable engineering in a Christian context. We were convinced we need to put it into some required courses so that everybody gets some of it because we think sustainability is a very important issue for all of our students. So it's put into the ethics and materials course, and then we've created the two uh, technical electives so they can explore these topics in greater detail. So questions. Okay, I'll, I'll ask a very straightforward question. You know Bob Voigt of Penn State University? In uh, no, I don't. Oh, okay, I've, I've <coughs> collaborated with him a lot. I, I've been to a lot of the American Foundry Society meetings. We did research together, so. Mm -hmm. Well, I, even though I spent my whole career in mechanical engineering programs, I would characterize, characterize myself as a materials engineer. Yeah. We did a lot of work with foundries. Uh, so how, how does that work out at Baylor? Uh, what, 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 uh, 
to what extent are the, the students at Baylor from a Christian background and the faculty from a Christian background? What differences? Uh, faculty at Baylor are required to be Christian. Students are not. Probably at least half of our students are probably active believers. Certainly a majority of those who go in international service projects are. But I mean, we openly present a Christian approach to ethics and sustainability in the class. So we're encouraged to do that where it's relevant. And that's one thing I really enjoyed about my time at Baylor. Really quick question. Oh, yeah. yeah. It is, is sustainability taught in virtually every course it can be? Like, you know, a circuits course, you'll talk about, you know, reduction of hazardous substances or in a thermodynamics course, you'll talk about ways of managing materials and cooling. I mean, is it, is, is it at every point you're kind of trying to touch on it or is it just these few courses where it comes up? Uh, my goal would be for it to be at every course, but I, I, I was the department chair for, uh, for 11 years. I'm not the chair now. We can't really enforce in every course, but more and more faculty are getting excited about it as the students are getting excited about it. So every student will get exposed to it in, in the two required courses. Uh, so uh, I think it's a growing process. When I first got inspired to do this after my sabbatical at Villanova, I don't think sustainability was in any of our courses five years ago. So it's really been a work in progress. I've been encouraged to see other faculty. There's already a professor who wants to teach my corrosion class, metallurgy class, now that I'm retired. I already have a volunteer to teach that next year. So I see that as a good sign moving forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so another question would be, how do you explain to students why it matters whether God created something as opposed to it just? How do I explain that? What, what difference does it make as far as sustainability? Like, uh, I mean, the chemistry of, uh, of like my corrosion same book class is the same whether a person's a believer or not. But the, the, I think the real issue is in the motivation to do so. That's why I have the readings uh, from Francis Schaeffer and the Pope as well as a number of biblical uh, quotations as well to make the point that if you're a Christian, you need to be concerned about the environment and sustainability, I think, is a lot broader than just the environment. Uh, so I, I try to make the point that being a good Christian steward, no matter what engineering you practice, you need to think about sustainability topics and even sustainability in your personal life. That's why I like that corrosion project. People start looking at corrosion in their bathroom and all sorts of places around them and how they could deal with it. Thanks. Uh, I'm sorry I arrived late and I missed much of your talk, but I'll go back and listen to it since it's being recorded. Uh, so maybe you already answered this question, but is not sustainability now part of ABET requirements? Yes, it absolutely is part of ABET requirements. <clears throat> and uh, it, that's happened in the last handful of years. Uh, but I think it's clear it's going to sustain uh, I, I, three years ago, joined the Engineering Accreditation Commission of ABET, which makes the final decisions. And this year, this summer, I got appointed to the Criteria Committee that has to approve any new criteria in all the engineering programs. So we certainly are going to enforce that everybody has to do with sustainability. It's an absolute requirement right now. Okay, so that's the time.